There's a belief that sprinters are born not made. Now, it's nothing more than a myth. No matter how great the talent or genetic predisposition, it takes years of high-level training to create a world-class sprinter. Human physiology shows that profound changes take place in an athlete's body during years of practice, though the structure of the body changes very slowly. Over the course of years, bones get harder and denser. Connective tissue and tendons become stronger and more elastic over the course of months. Muscles grow bigger and more explosive, and this occurs at least in a few weeks. All these changes take place in every athlete's body as a result of adaptation to continuous training stress. Still, the central nervous system is very sensitive and responsive to new challenges. In just a few minutes, it can learn new ways to move. The problem is that the brain can't recognize if the new movement is right or wrong. With constant practice, the brain creates a new movement pattern, and the pattern will be replayed in the competitions regardless if it's right or wrong. So it's essential to learn the right movements in the beginning, as it'll be extremely difficult to reprogram them later on. Thus, learning optimal sprinting technique and the ability to use elastic components of the body to produce spring-like force is an incredibly complex skill, though any athlete, if trained properly, can master it. 70 years ago, running a sub-10 second was considered impossible to experts and scientists. At the time, it was viewed as too fast for the human body. Now, every year, more and more sprinters break the 10-second barrier. The evidence suggests that there's no ideal body type to achieve that. The fastest athletes come in different shapes and sizes. There is no specific color or age for speed. The shortest guy that ran the 100-meter dash in 10 seconds is Trendon Holiday, with the body height of just 1.65 meters. By contrast, Usain Bolt is the tallest guy, standing at 1.96 meters. He's the current 100-meter world record holder. Imagine if Bolt listened to the experts who stated he was too tall for sprint. Mark Jelks, weighing 67 kilograms, is the lightest sprinter to have ever run sub-10 seconds. At the opposite side of anthropometry is Ryan Bailey, who managed to clock a sub-10 time, having a body mass of 96 kilograms. Interestingly, sub-10 runners have different movement characteristics as well. Kamar Bailey Cole needed a frequency of just 4.13 strides per second to go 9.96, while Trendon Holiday exceeded 5 strides per second to hit the 10-second mark. Trayvon Brommel and Mark Lewis Francis were just 18 years old when they joined the Sub-10 Club. Kim Collins is the oldest man to break the 10-second barrier at the age of 40, registering a personal best of 9.93. Based on statistics and years of researching the biomechanics of sprinting, humans get faster and faster. With advanced technology, superior sports medicine, enhanced training techniques, super-fast track surfaces, there is no limit to human speed in the foreseeable future.